field, overcoming the challenges of implementing serialization across a diverse pharmaceutical manufacturing environment. My name is Diane and I will be your Xbox host for today. And today's webinar will run for approximately 60 minutes and this presentation includes a Q&A session with our speakers. And we have a great webinar today for everyone packed with multiple expert speakers. And our webinar is designed to be interactive and they work best when you're involved. So please feel free to submit any questions or comments you may have for our speakers throughout the presentation. And you could do so by using the questions chat box and we'll try to attend to your questions during the Q&A session. This chat box located in the control panel on the right hand side of your screen. And if you require any other assistance, please contact me at any time by sending a message using this chat panel. At this time, all participants are in the listen-only mode, and please note that this event will be recorded and made available for future download. At this point, I would like to thank both Sia Vision and Zenith Technologies for the content of this webinar. Sia Vision is a leading serialization technology provider thanks to its special specialist expertise in the pharmaceutical sector and its understanding of industry regulations, and they have more than 3,500 lines deployed worldwide. Its serialization software and product has a proven track record within the pharmaceutical sector for delivering a robust and reliable system built and designed on best practices. With minimal training required, its standardized configuration and centralized control means the system is not only easy to use, but it's the perfect choice for your serialization requirements. It provides a flexible and scalable architecture, allowing a cost-effective solution across different facilities with varying complexity and Zenith Technologies is a leading company delivering manufacturing software systems that enable life science businesses to be compliant and competitive. Working with nine out of top 10 life science companies globally, their technical strengths and experience takes the pain out of project implementation. With 16 offices worldwide, Zenith has both local and global site support and knowledge on hand 24-7. Zenith's first-hand experience of serialization project implementation has enabled them to develop a strong skill set using proven methodologies. Together, Sia Vision and Zenith Technologies are committed in providing leading track and trace solutions and services to pharmaceutical industries and OEMs, ensuring their flexibility and reliable service matches with the highest quality standards they uphold whilst meeting increasingly challenging timescales. And now, I would like to introduce our speakers for today's event. Our first speaker is Carlos Machado. Carlos is the Serialization Director at Zenith Technologies with significant experience of assisting pharmaceutical manufacturers with track and trace technologies, having worked on more than 75 serialization projects from both an operations and delivery perspective. He will then be joined by Terry Crawford from GlaxoSmithKline, and Terry has 15 years experience in the pharmaceutical industry and over 10 years experience in implementing serialization. He is well known in the field as a subject matter expert and has worked on a variety of serialization solution projects for many of the top 10 pharmaceutical companies globally. After which our next two speakers are Matayo Barberi from Sia Vision and Nick Edwards from Zenith Technologies. As Senior Product and Project Manager in Sia Vision, Matayo has extensive experience in setting up and developing worldwide projects focused on pharmaceutical track and trace while Nick is the Senior Automation Engineer at Zenith Technologies and has over 20 years experience in the pharmaceutical industry. He has worked on global projects for many of the top 10 pharmaceutical companies, including major serialization projects. And now without further ado, I would like to hand over the mic to Carlos. And Carlos, you may begin when you are ready. Thank you, Diane. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and good afternoon. On behalf of Sayer Vision, Zenith Technologies, and our guest speaker, Mr. Terry Crawford, I want to thank each of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to attend our serialization webinar. Our goal for this session is to provide you with valuable information that will allow you to understand the challenges companies face in today's serialization environment, learn from the experiences of industry experts, and receive a comprehensive overview of the Sayer Vision product suite so you can make the best decisions possible as you begin to roll out your serialization plans for 2017 and beyond. To help you understand who we are, I'd like to give you a brief overview of the Sayer Vision Zenith Technology Partnership. As Dion alluded to, Sayer Vision is one of the leading serialization solution providers, having su successfully deployed over 3,500 
vision and serialization systems worldwide since being founded over 20 years ago. While Zenith has made its mark as a global leader in turnkey integrations, engineering services, global project management, and 24-7 customer support services. In 2015, both organizations decided to team up utilizing each other's strengths, global reach, and technical capabilities to deliver a robust serialization solution, provide superior customer experience, engage in true partnership with our customers, and to expand our local capabilities and presence for installations and post project support. To recap, we are here today to learn from each other, to answer any questions or uncertainties you may have. We are here today to provide working examples of, ch of the challenges organizations face and the steps required to implement a serialization program successfully. We are here today to demonstrate that SAVE Vision and Zenith Technologies have the right serialization solution to meet and exceed your needs and to serve as the perfect partner to team up with and work side by side in delivering on time, on budget, and with flawless execution. Our agenda today will consist of several topics. First, we will discuss the drivers, challenges, and benefits around serialization. Next, we will have a Q&A with Mr. Terry Crawford from GSK. After our interview, my colleague, Mr. Matteo Barbari, will provide a detailed technical review of the SaveVision product suite and system architecture for the integration with levels one through four. Then Mr. Nick Edwards will present our 14 steps to best practice deployment. Towards the end, we will open up the floor holding a Q&A session where each of you can ask questions to the individual on the panel. And finally, we will close the webinar with a quick recap of what was discussed, provide each of you with an opportunity to engage with our panelists after the webinar, provide our contact information, and so on. Drivers towards serialization. The U.S. and EU healthcare industry is changing rapidly, and organizations like yours are being challenged to adapt to new legislation and regulations, lower costs, and to increase efficiency, all while improving patient safety, ensuring supply chain security, minimizing revenue loss, and standardizing across multiple facilities. Yeah. For consumers as well as your organizations, patient safety and supply chain security is the utmost importance. Citing some t statistics, we know that globally counterfeit drug sales reach $75 billion annually, and the value of counterfeit drug market is estimated at $200 billion. In the U.S., an estimated 80% of the counterfeit drugs that are consumed come from overseas. And who estimates that 16% of counterfeit drugs contain the wrong ingredients, while 17% contain the wrong levels of necessary ingredients? These are just some of the numbers but we can all agree that there's a real problem that is not going away. When we analyze the threats and negative impact of counterfeit medicines, we find that counterfeit medicines can prove to be ineffective, contribute to the development of drug resistance, can exasperate a condition, prolong treatment, or even in some cases, cause death. We also have to consider public trust in the equation, and the negative health may erode their faith in the healthcare systems healthcare authorities, and drug manufacturers. Ah, excuse me about that. My apologies. Financial benefits. The financial benefits of serialization can be realized in several areas. We know that by identifying, capturing, and sharing vital information, organizations like yourselves will increase order to cash process efficiency, control costs, and shipping accuracy. Additionally, having full visibility into the supply chain process, the company can better control inventory, prevent chargebacks due to packing errors, prevent duplicate chargebacks, and minimize claims against pharmaceutical manufacturers. These are just some of the financial benefits. The list goes on. Efficiencies and standardization. We know by implementing GS1 standards, there will be improvements in company-to-company -company communication throughout the supply chain. Fast and accurate data capture at every point in the supply chain, better control over distribution and storage, and the ability to automate warehouse operations, just to name some of the few. Finally, 
By selecting a serialization provider like SayVision, you have the opportunity to utilize our technology and product offering to develop standardized configuration and architectures that can be leveraged and delivered across multiple facilities and packaging lines within those facilities. We will capitalize on the standards that have been developed and vetted out with the OEM equipment suppliers we have delivered serialization solutions with over the years. Also, as your program rolls out, efficiencies will be gained in the design, build, and deployment phases of your projects as part of the ongoing analysis, lessons learned, and standardization that takes place. The scope of the serialization market. When we look at the requirements across the globe, we see China, India, South Korea, and Saudi Arabia have already enacted regulations requiring serialization. China, for instance, has taken a phased approach to implementing track and trace technologies, covering select products on their essential drug list. China's requirements include a 20-digit linear barcode containing a 7-digit China national drug code, a 9-digit serial number, and four check digits. Similarly, Saudi Arabia took a phased approach that by March 2015, the data matrix needed only to contain the G10 expiration date and batch number, while phase two requires having the serial number added by March of this year. Brazil, on the other hand, requires full track and trace with aggregation and has the most complex regulations in the world today. Some consider Brazil a hybrid model as the primary burden falls on manufacturing facilities with the pharmacies and distributors sharing some of the responsibilities around reporting. Each of these countries thereby have pushed European and US based pharmaceutical manufacturers into developing serialization programs for shipments into these countries. For the US, however, the Drug Supply Chain Security Act requires that manufacturers mark packages with a product identifier, serial number, lot number, and expiration date by 2017. By November of 2023, companies will need to have a full track and trace system in place. Within the European Union, companies who manufacture, sell, or disperse medications in the EU have until February 2019 to comply with the new track and trace regulations outlined in the Falsified Medicines Directive. The FMD requirements involve compliance reporting and product verification at the point of dispense and include a GS1 data matrix encoded with G10 or N10, a serial number, lot, and expiration date. There's no question serialization is a benefit for everyone, and organizations have to think beyond just compliance. The evolution of serialization is proving to eliminate many of the gaps we see today and has touched upon assist in upholding brand protection, improving supply chain security, solidifying patient safety, and promoting business continuity and standardization from facility to facility. Depending on your requirements, there are different types of serialization solutions and capabilities available that we can provide that will meet and exceed your needs. Our mission is to build a partnership with our customers, serving not only as a solution provider, but a subject matter expert. We'll be going into much more detail around the solutions available later in our presentation. On that note, I'm happy to introduce Mr. Terry Crawford. Terry comes to us from GSK, where he's been involved delivering serialization lines for several of their facilities. He's well versed in understanding the requirements, processes, and SOPs that need to be created. In addition, he's experienced in the training of personnel and understanding the dynamic behind that as well as understanding the data management aspect and reporting back to regulatory bodies. In short, Terry brings a wealth of knowledge from the customer's experience. Welcome, Terry. Uh, good morning, good afternoon to you and everyone. Okay. Um, well, let's jump right in it, shall we? Uh, I'm sure our listeners are eager to hear what you have to say today, Terry. Okay. So, Terry, tell us, based on your experience, what do you feel were the biggest challenges faced prior to implementing serialization? So, uh, I work for GSK, as we've said, which is obviously a large multinational with uh, many sites in many countries, uh, delivering products to well over 100 uh, countries in the world. And so, the first, the first step on this journey is about understanding that scope. 
So which markets does your company manufacture for? Uh, which products go to those markets? Which sites make those products? And even in fact, on which lines packaging equipment you use today to uh, create those products, for packaging those products to those markets. So there's a whole uh, initial phase uh, you can call, uh, sometimes called a project definition, where the first part is to work out what is the scope of the impact for your company. And then also, but not to forget, do you use contract manufacturers to make some of your products? Because as market authorization holder, uh, you are responsible in the eyes of most regulators for the serialization activities on those products. So you have some ownership there of your contract manufacturing uh, activities. And then also the other way, do you make products for somebody else? Either as a, so when you work as a contract manufacturer, so then, because the serialization regulations are to the market authorization holder, which would be your customer or client, uh, but the actual work is going to be done by yourself. So what is the impact to that on uh, your company? And then also working out, once you have an idea of sort of like the scope of the uh, of the project on your company, is to work out what type of project is this? Is it an IT project in that it's about reporting to regulators? Is it an equipment project in that it's packaging line equipment that needs to be upgraded? Possibly you have old equipment or equipment that needs new vision systems. Is it about artwork that goes on the packs on the product that goes to those markets? Um, is it about changing business processes um, or how the products move through your supply train? In fact, serialization is all of these things. Uh, so, of course, I think as you can see, it's, there's a lot to get hold of in the first step, if you like. There's a lot of information that you may need to gather before you yes. can start to progress. So, so what you're telling the audience in a nutshell is that there are a number of challenges to be considered throughout all phases. The challenge is not isolated to one sector of the business, but rather impacts many areas, and how they proactively plan kind of to manage these challenges will determine how successful their serialization program will be. Is that a safe assessment? Indeed, yes, exactly. Okay. I think we, we can move forward. Um, our next question. From a customer's perspective, how important is it to identify the right serialization partner, and what should our attendees look for? So here it's about, uh, I mean, as a company, a pharmaceutical company, if you have the in-house expertise who, that is somebody who is tracking regulations around the world, somebody who knows, or various people who know about the IT systems and how you're going to store and report data, and about your packaging lines and the equipment that that needs and the vendor choices there and the business process analysts in-house to document all of this. If you have all of that, then maybe you don't need a partner. But in fact, nobody has all of this. Um, and especially when you consider, as I said, the change in serialization markets uh, and in the regulations, that's a full-time job in its own. Um, so. When we're looking for partners, we're talking about people who can help uh, manage your project, could be people to help uh, do vendor selection, uh, to document your requirements even, to help with testing uh, and deployment activities. So really, it's about having somebody who knows about serialization, if you're going to an outside partner for some of these activities. Somebody with offices in your regions where you operate, because um, the time zones also have a big, a big impact on how many hours of pro uh, active work you can do, the project team can do in the day, uh, their resource availability, and then if we're talking about solution partners, it's about their support desk capability, their customer training, and how they approach that with uh, documentation and training materials and training classes, for example, that they can provide to the end users, that is the operators and the technicians that will use their solutions, and the support documentation that goes with that. So again, 
uh, you can see there's lots of things to consider when looking at uh, different potential serialization partners for your solutions. So Terry, well, you know, when I hear, hear responses, there's a couple of things that I keyed on, and one of them ties into our first question around uh, the challenges is that internal subject matter expert and very difficult for organizations to have that full scope of individuals that can handle the soup to nuts of a serialization project. So that emphasis that you made on having um, a vendor that has a su successful track record, can, can work side by side, has a proven interface at all levels, uh, can support and manage the process around validation, all seem to tie into how you select the right partner. Exactly, yeah, indeed. Moving forward, question number three, what are some of the major considerations you and uh, some of your colleagues um, have faced around uh, the deployment and implementation phases? So this question really follows uh, straight on from the last one. So once you've chosen a solution vendor or vendors uh, for that you need to then deploy across your manufacturing sites. Um, it's then, I mean, part of the selection criteria is the approach you're going to take as a company to deployment. Are you going to use your vendor to do all your deployment work? And so their technicians are expected to run all over the world, potentially installing the system in your systems in many, in many places. Or is there something here about using a, a core central team within your company, uh, perhaps drawn from uh, your brightest technicians from your various packaging sites to do the deployment work, because in fact it will be them who do the support in the long run. So there is some benefit to be gained to have, making sure that your site resources are well uh, involved in the deployment activities. Um, and also about how you're going to integrate into your existing systems within your company. So the, the unique thing about serialization as a project is no other project in pharma is really as broad or touches as many areas as serialization project forces you to do. Um, as I say, some of those groups that we talked about earlier. So how that's going to be implemented within your existing production systems uh, and the touch points and the data handoffs uh, all have to be well considered um, as you design your project and how you're going to deploy it. So it's a big challenge. Hmm. Th that all makes sense. And, and when we look at from an overall perspective, you know, having a cost-effective solution, being able to standardize on your deployment approach continuously so you can gain efficiencies and, and learn, have your lessons learned, uh, even that includes integration and how your core team is going to execute their projects are all valid points. Uh, if I even add to, from a validation perspective, which can be a quite daunting task, as you know, um, can sometimes seem to grow into a project all within itself and, and, and tend to grow its own tentacles, so to speak. Yeah, and it's about having involvement like from quality groups within your project team from very early on and to have clear, like a documented process and approach to validation. Um, so you don't have to talk about it as you're trying to do it, you already have an approach and a plan that you're working to and that everybody's signed up to. Very good, very good. Okay, um, let's move forward. What is the biggest challenge, Terry, you have seen manifest itself after the packaging line is validated and the project goes live? Um, you know, feel free to elaborate as you see fit. So, you, a lot of projects struggle post the implementation, once everybody's happy, yes, we've installed everything and everything's gone through IQ, OQ, PQ and the systems all work, but nothing stays constant. So this is about uh, ongoing training, this is about support, how are you going to support all of these solutions? Because uh, typically what the serialization project will mean to you is that you've changed something on all your packaging lines that supply products to these markets that you supply that are demanding civilization. So you've done a big change project 
Uh, so now it's about supporting that. And as operators come and go, or technicians come and go, um, the other thing, of course, to understand is the regulations are changing all the time. New markets are coming in all of the time. Uh, in our own project, we started with five markets. I think we're well up to ten markets now over the past couple of years as new markets mm -hmm. have are coming online, possibly with different and new requirements. There's a thing about managing updates to this installed base that you've put in. And it's about planning for that whilst you're doing the project as well. So, so I think the overall message here is organization need to be as proactive as possible in trying to stay ahead of the curve on what developments are going to unfold within the different markets, how they're going to deal with upgrades or enhancements to their system, uh, downtime, and, and so on and so forth. Oh, yes, indeed. Yep. Okay. Very good. So, well, we see that serialization, there are a number of changes that take place in an organization. Therefore, how important is education and communication in driving the cultural change across the different business units? So here, this will affect potentially the bigger companies rather than the smaller ones and those that pick to have a central core project team where all the experts are sitting together and writing requirements, picking and design, helping design solutions and writing deployment plans, it's actually the sites that will take the work in that uh, the change is actually at the site level. So the operators have to get to, in, have to understand a new system. The operators have to understand the new ways of working with serialization. Uh, things have to be done in a slightly different way once you're serializing your product because it's also about, it's not just about the product anymore. It's about the integrity of the data you're creating around that product. So the serialization data of, as well as the GTIN or the ENTIN, you have batch and expiry, which we've always had, but now you have a serial number. But that serial number on that pack is unique in the world. So your data records and your management of data through all the system, your IT systems in a company has to be solid because without that data in the right place uh, in the market, then your product just gets returned. And potentially there are some markets are also talking about fines for returns. So uh, it's a big change, um, as I say, especially for uh, the bigger companies and to make, and the challenge is to make sure that you bring the sites along with the journey so that they're also heavily involved in the design and how you're going to implement this, even if they're not doing so much work initially, but at least they're understanding the journey that um, the project is being taken on. Uh, so they understand the why uh, they're getting so many changes to their site. Yeah, I agree with, with all those responses, and especially the, the point you made about uh, the importance of data integrity. Uh, what I can say from our experience, the cultural change can be difficult at times because in many cases, civilization is new to people at all le levels of the business, kind of what you alluded to. Uh, but what I have seen is that people tend not to be resistant to change, rather embrace it, but there is a learning curve. There is a process that needs to be vetted out and, and, and followed continuously because of those different changes and nuances on how the packaging operations are actually going to run. Yeah, indeed. Yep. Okay, and then our, our final question for you, Terry. Um, as you're aware, uh, we provide uh, on-site system training and continuous training through our e-learning environment. From your perspective, how pivotal do you feel continuous training is for an organization in the successful operation of their serialization activities across a single location or multiple locations? So this one is uh, this one is a subject close to my heart. In fact, so the for a company like GSK, we are currently planning uh, 200 packaging lines across 24 sites across the world, and because of the solutions we've chosen, 
that pretty much basically means that those 200 packaging lines will be using the same software at the same version and therefore we could build best practice to all of our sites uh, in terms of ways of working with that software and the processes to run the batch and to manage the data and therefore our training materials could be packaged based on those processes and again continuous feedback from the site saying well this works a bit better or this or that works a bit better and have the training material refreshed through the central team and then pushed out to all sites so everybody gets a benefit because if you're going to have a centrally selected if you like uh, solution that all your sites even if it's one site with a couple of lines or several sites or many many sites the benefits of uh, driving out the training and the standard ways of working using the same software so everybody sees the same stuff uh, I mean the benefits there are measurable for your support teams for your ways of working and in fact what we've found also for our um, OEE and the hit that a packaging line might take for having these updates and started serialization in fact we've seen OEE go up and improve beyond what it was originally before the project started because we are training out best practice on how to use the systems and the equipment um, and so and as I said before it's about uh, people are always moving, coming and leaving, moving departments. So having a, a training package there ready to roll out to somebody to get them working to to the best way as quickly as possible on your packaging line has got to be uh, helping everybody. Yeah, there's there's no doubt that you know the initial training and on-site training is, is is vital and so important to get your the packaging line up and running. But that continuous training, as you alluded to, that the standardized approach, the, the development of being able to train the trainer and create an environment where you know success is long-term, not just short-term, uh, is, is integral to an organization's success in, in the serialization environment. Oh yes, definitely. Yep. Okay. Um, so on that note, uh, I want to once again uh, thank you, Terry, for joining us and providing the group with uh, your detailed responses and your experiences. We really appreciate it. Oh, oh, thank you. And I see you're welcome. Thank you very much. And I see at this point, Dion, we're getting one of our polling questions coming in. Absolutely, we do have a polling question for our audiences, and I'm just going to launch that polling question right now on everybody's screens. And for this polling question, you can vote live on your screen. And the polling question is, what is the biggest issue you face in implementing serialization? And the five options you have here is technology selection, deployment timescales, understanding the requirements, resourcing your deployment, or establishing life cycle support. And again, for this polling question, you can vote live on your screens. And again, the polling question is, what is the biggest issue you face in implementing serialization? And it looks like some of you have voted. I'm just going to keep this on the screen for everyone to vote uh, just for a couple more seconds so that we can get the most votes we can from our, our attendees today. And for this one, you can vote one out of the five answers you can see on your screen right now. Okay, it looks like most of you have voted, and I'm just going to close this poll and share the answers with everyone of what our attendees have voted on their screens right now. I'm just going to close the poll right now, and I'm going to share the answers. And it looks like there's a tie at 26% for both deployment time scales and understanding the requirements, followed by a 22% saying resourcing your deployment, followed by a 16% say technology selection, and a 10% said establishing life cycle support. And with that, Carlos, I hand back the presentation to you. Thank you again, Diane. Uh, I would now like to introduce our serialization product and project manager, Mr. Matteo Barbary. Matteo has spent several years designing and refining the SEA Vision product suite with our team of product and software developers. Matteo has also led dozens of serialization implementations of different complexities from concept through go live, providing the technical and management expertise necessary for successful completion, 
I'll now let Matteo take control so he can provide an overview of the Sea Vision serialization architecture. Welcome, Matteo. Thank you, Carlos, and uh, welcome uh, again, everybody. This is uh, Matteo Barbieri speaking. So right now, following the many issues introduced concerning the serialization challenges and benefits, I would like to shortly describe the approach of Sea Vision in track and trace solution that is mainly designed to be always fully adaptable to the evolving track and trace regulatory framework. On this slide, we will see the four levels that are involved on a production site in a track and trace project. Starting from the top, we have level four that identify the corporate level. This is an environment composed by multiple actors. On this family of software, we can identify different functionality. We have the ERP systems that are used, for instance, to transfer to the line the information related to the process order to be processed. We have the track and trade system that are used to transfer to the packaging lines the serial number needed to identify the physical object and address the status of the physical object at the end of the production. We will see on the next slide how our architecture can be interfaced with those actors in order to satisfy all the customer requirement. If we move now to level three, at, that, at this level, we have the site application server. This level is responsible for all the communication between level four and level two that we will see later. In our solution, we have one site application server and no line server. Our, line, our site application server is a module application that runs as a service, so a software without an HMI, and is based on a central core that can be expanded with additional functions according to the customer need. The idea is that each single module, we will see more in detail each single plugin or external service, is used to implement a specific function and is connected to the other one only through the central core. This allows no interaction between them and more flexibility in terms of changes and upgrade. This structure gives the opportunity to our customer to segment the investment depending from the real customer and market needs. For example, the introduction of new plugin in order to support track and new track and trace requirements that are not foreseen on the initial installation doesn't affect the existing scenario. Site application server from the technical point of view can be installed on a virtual environment or on a physical server that run with Windows Server operating system and is based on a SQL database. The SQL database is the repository for all the data that are used to implement the different functionality on the lines. So it's used as a serial number repository, as material master data repository, and as buffer for the, for the process order uh, data. If we move now to level two and level one, we can identify the two line levels. Line one include all the hardware devices put on the packaging machine as printer, camera, and hand scanner. And level two identify the Sea Vision line management system. Our LMS is composed by a PC Windows based with our OCV software that perform all the major function at this level. So this software manage the line devices, is responsible for inspection control, is responsible for the communication with the PLC, it manage the track and trace operation and is the serial number repository during the batch. This software is an evolution of the software used in the past before serialization to perform the standard control on the lines. This means that there is no need for the operator to learn a new software and a new interface. Standard line, as you can see from the slide, are equipped with two LMS. One LMS installed on the print and check machine responsible for commissioning of the items and one LMS installed on the aggregation machine. The same software can manage from the manual solution to the fully automatic case packer. And the LMS aggregation is responsible for all the level of aggregation. The same software, so this means the same interface from the operator point of view, is installed on the two system. Another key point is that there is no need of communication between level two and level three during the batch. 
because the serial number are downloaded at batch start and they are uploaded back to level 3 at the end of the batch. The last hector that I would like to identify in our solution is the line client HMI that is usually installed at packaging line level. This HMI is used to trigger the function executed by the site application server like batch start and batch end and all the batch related functions. An offline client can be used in order to centralize the functions that are not usually executed at line level, like the process order management, the RACI management, and the user permission setup. We have seen now how the packaging area is covered, but another important point on those projects is the warehouse. At this level, Savision proposes a working station software that is capable to perform all the needed post-batch reworking functions like a QA sampling, challenging, unpack, and so on. This software is obviously able to manage line devices like printer and scanner to implement those functions. I would like now to underline the chucky point of our solution before go in detail on the different models. The chicken point are the scalability and the configurability of this kind of solution. The first one is ensured by the use of the external plugin and the external service. That model can be added to an existing scenario without impact on the existing situation. With the external service, we add new function. And with the plugin, we customize function already existing. Both are based on configuration file and template, and these allow us a high flexibility. Those two features lead us to two advantages, the modularity and a low impact on the validation process, because each function can be implemented only when it's really necessary, and each module can be added without impact the previous functionality that are already installed and qualified. We will go now through the different models that we use in order to interface our site application server with the company level four. The first module is the recipe interface service. This module is linked to the material master data management. Through this interface, we can synchronize the recipe data with the site recipe manual manager, sorry, without manual intervention, so avoiding data entry of the operator. The second important module is the process order interface. So a process order is the set of the information that are needed to run a batch that are composed by batch variable data, batch number, expiry date, quantity, and so on, and the recipe to be used. This uh, selection can be done manually through the line client or through this interface, we can buffer the data that are received from the ERP on our database, and we can allow the operator to choose the process order at batch start without any data entry error. The next module is uh, the serial number provisioning module. In our architecture, the serial number are stored on the central database on the site application server, and site application server is responsible for provisioning of serial number. That means query the level four in order to receive the serial number. Site application server is also capable to self-generate random serial number with a configurable structure. And this serial number plugin is responsible for this function. We can work with an asynchronous module based on threshold. We can query the serial number uh, synchronous the batch start, or we can work with manual mode, depending from customer preferences. The next module is the event posting module. With this module, we can provide back to the level four the event generated from the line. The data posted include commissioning, decommissioning, aggregation, disaggregation, and transfer shipment activities. Different kind of timing can be configured in order to follow the customer SOP. The last module is the MES interface. So with this external service, we can implement a communication between the site application server and the MES. 
So with this service, we, we can implement the main basic functions that are usually uh, executed on the MES software, so like batch start and batch end. So the line equipment can receive a batch command through the site application server from the MES. Now we have seen the main model that interface level four with level three. I would like now to show you the two main models that we use in order to interface the line equipment with our site application server. The first module is the batch management plugin that allow the site application server to start a batch and run a process order on all the line equipment that can be PLC, vision system, and printers from a central point. We, can, we have seen that we can receive batch start command from line client or uh, from uh, MES, but this uh, plugin is responsible to translate to the line equipment the command. The last module, very quickly, is the data collection plugin that allow you to receive from the machine, the PLC, the vision system, all the data collected during the batch. So counter, um, audit trail, machine status, and allow you to perform OE evaluation and uh, reporting generation at line client level. On this uh, last slide, I would like to resume the main function that you can execute through our line client HMI. So the batch management function, batch start, batch end, the capability of the system to hold and resume, so to pause a batch, and the generation of the custom report. Again, in a centralized station, usually this system is used to perform recipe configuration, user credential management with or without Active Directory, generation of statistics, and process order management that allow you to, sch to schedule the production of the operators. The last instance of the line client is usually installed on the reworking area and allow you to perform post-batch reworking and manage the shipment. So thanks uh, to everybody. I have present uh, just uh, some of the points of our architecture. I hope uh, you appreciate it and uh, thank you. And uh, Carlos, please uh, go back with the, the webinar. Thank you, Matero, for uh, that overview of the serialization capabilities and solution architecture for SAIA Vision. Uh, and I see we are getting um, another polling question in, Dion, if you want to. Absolutely. We do have a second polling question for our audience members today. And I'm just going to launch that on everyone's screens right now. And the polling question is, what is your time scale for implementing a serialization solution? And of the five, you can select already in progress vendor selected or already in progress vendor not yet selected, zero to three months, three to six months, or six months plus. And like our earlier polling question, you can vote live on your screen. And again, the polling question is, what is your time scale for implementing a serialization solution? And looks like some of you have voted. I'm just going to put this right on everyone's screens for just a couple more seconds so that most of you can vote. And again, you can vote live in any one out of the five answers right here that is the answer for you. Good. Okay. It looks like um, most of you have voted, so I'm just going to close the polling question right now and share the answers with everyone and what they say. And looks like... 46% of you said already in progress, vendor selected. 26% said already in progress, vendor not yet selected. A good 26 also said six months plus, followed by a 3% to zero three months. And with that, Carlos, I hand back the presentation to you. Thank you. Um, and finally, our last presenter is Mr. Nick Edwards, joining us from the UK office. Nick comes to us with a wealth of experience in a number of different areas such as technical support, analyst for IT services, serialization, and MES. He currently serves as a Save Vision SME on a large serialization project for one of our top five pharma customers. Nick, during his time today, will be reviewing the 14, 14 steps to the best practice. practice. Okay, well, thank you, Carlos, um, and uh, hello to everyone on the call. Uh, so today I'd like to present 
uh, an approach to the challenges of serialization uh, and how those can be implemented within an organization. This particular approach identifies 14 steps to assess the requirements of serialization, design a solution, and then ultimately roll that solution out across a large organization. Um, and I think it's worth pointing out at this point that uh, this is not a theoretical model, but it is based on a real life project. So the 14 steps are basically split into four phases. Uh, we've got an assess and design phase, and this is really about working out a balance between what you need to do and actually implementing that solution. Uh, a build phase that really is proving that your solution works and is fit for purpose. Uh, and you may want to consider things like sandbox environments, test labs, pilot lines, before preparing your deployment strategy. Once into the deployment stage, um, this is all about planning the installations and producing standardized installation packs. And then finally, we've got the support stage. Um, there's going to be some line impact, so you're going to be looking into your overall equipment effectiveness. And then it's really looking at the post-deployment support, um, you know, 24-7 steady state, ongoing training, and retaining that knowledge within your organization. So if we move into the steps, uh, step one uh, is an obvious one, uh, market regulations. And this is about assessing which of your products are going to be impacted by what market regulations. Uh, it seems a, a fairly simple uh, task, but with constantly changing regulations and new regulations coming in, they, 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 com they complicate this process. Uh, and you may be faced with the decision to leave a particular solution for later in the day and risk not being ready versus putting time, money and effort into a proof of concept, I need to have that regulation revoked or changed. Uh, and I'll, I'll use the Brazil um, piece as an example there. Uh, project justification. Um, well, Carlos already touched across this uh, earlier in his presentation. Compliance, yes, but there are lots of added benefits. Uh, moving on to vendor selection. Um, and this may be uh, one of the key points um, in, in, in your project. Um, and it's going to affect all levels of your of your uh, manufacturing process you know uh, I'm not going to labor too much on this because Matteo did cover it but you know you've got your uh, printers cameras connected to uh, vision systems uh, your line systems connected to the vision systems which ultimately connect to a, a central site server and then moving up into your level 4 your, your ERP systems now, depending on the size of your organization, it might not affect all these levels, but it certainly will affect some of them. And vendor selection could be key um, in getting the right solution implemented in a timely manner. You know, say a vision provide market leading solutions, uh, serialization solutions for software and hardware across levels one through three, uh, and then if have the experience to implement these solutions in your organization. Uh, managing key stakeholders. So this graph basically is a representation of headcount. Um, and the early stages of uh, the project assess and design is really about best practice in des design and, and you're going to have a fairly fixed project team throughout this stage. Uh, moving into the build phase, so this is about working with your vendors and you know you're hoping that they've done this before. Um, to assist you in this complex process. Lots of stages of the build process, um, you know, as the deployment phase is brought into the picture, your headcount is likely to increase. Once moving into the deployment stage, and again this could be down to the size of your company, uh, you could see the deployment stage being one of the, uh, the larger pieces of work. And then finally moving into the support phase, which is really about retaining knowledge, uh, re re retaining that ongoing staff training. Um, you're going to get releases, uh, new software releases from vendors 
in line with new market regulations as they come online. Program design. So how does your project team look? So this is an example of a project team centrally controlled. You've got a serialization owner on top of the pile looking after all the other different work streams. You're going to need someone in re regional serialization, someone who's out there in communication with the markets, seeing what new regulations are coming on board and really keeping in touch with those new regulations to make sure that your organization is prepared for, for new regulations coming online. You'd like to have a, a business process team who are going to push the business requirements onto the design and IT team who are going to manage the changes, the initial design and they're going to manage the changes for future releases to meet ongoing market legislation. Uh, support service, so they're going to come into the picture as your production lines start coming online producing serialized batches. Uh, a deployment team, good to have a dedicated team ensuring consistent reliable deployments to your manufacturing sites and lines. Uh, program management, just standard admin. Engineering equipment, you're going to procure new equipment, whether that's purely vision systems or whether that's new machinery incorporated with vision systems, but you are going to get a lot of new equipment on your lines. Uh, and finally, our friends in uh, Q&A making sure that everyone else is doing their jobs correctly. Architecture. So this is an example of, of how your uh, architecture could look like. Um, multiple sites with multiple lines connecting to site servers which ultimately will all connect up to a central uh, EPSIS system, your ERP level. Um, possibly through some kind of middleware uh, and that middleware will enable you to route um, external uh, customers or CMOs into your organization. Okay, so moving on to the, uh, the, the build phase. So this could be about Packaging line impact. So you're going to gather data on your existing uh, solutions um, that you've identified from step one. Um, and this would be, you know, are you going to upgrade existing lines and retrofit vision systems to you, or are you going to actually be buying new equipment? Uh, step eight, moving on to serialized schema. So you're going to create a lot of data with serialization and you're going to have to understand how that's transferred within your company. How it's transferred externally will be really driven by market regulations or possibly your customers. Step nine, change management. So it's a, it's a standard procedure but be aware that with serialization you are going to have the need for a bus change management process because there are going to be lots of changes again mainly around to new regulations, new markets coming into the project. Learning and training, um, so this should really be considered in step three and the cost estimated in step two uh, and it should not be underestimated. Serialization is going to impact every stage of your manufacturing process and beyond. Operators, new ways of working and SOPs, uh, engineers dealing with new line systems equipment and that's just to name a few. Moving into the deployment stage, as a rule of thumb if, if you need to update more than two packaging lines on two sites a standard approach to deployment will definitely save you time and money. And some of the benefits uh, of a standardized deployment approach uh, if you can test your functionality of your serialization solution once for example, in a, a test lab environment, sites can then leverage this testing and OQ immediately once installed on the line. Uh, this consistent deployment template across all sites, you know, using a proven and repeatable process. And using this consistent process will allow deployment to become more efficient with each and each line deployment. Uh, 
and then moving on into steady state support services are going to be dealing with the same standard approach on each site so it's going to help support services uh, release management understand again this is all down to regulations and functionality you are going to have multiple releases of your supply solutions during the project and you need to understand how you're going to manage this and then finally moving into the support services so again managing line impact all these changes will impact site efficiency figures so again emphasis on the training materials in step 10 will help reduce the impact here uh, once again post deployment support it's going to affect all areas of your process you know can't emphasize this enough with serialization um, you need to start designing a, a service for your support services right back in step 3 and, and with the complexities of your support service you may even want to consider something like a triage team because in the initial stages mm. you know do your people on your lines understand where the problem is so I mentioned earlier that this is not a theoretical model uh, this is a based on a real-life project and um, I'm not going to go into the detail of the text you see on the screen but just to give you uh, some idea of the scope of this particular project um, so you're looking at 24 sites with over 200 lines, uh, 10 market requirements. Uh, back in 2012, uh, phase one was um, executed. 2013, the phase two, uh, the, the build stage, a whole year to re release this uh, across a pilot line. And then moving into 2014, deployments. 10 sites, 49 lines, 2015, four sites, 47 lines, and looking at sort of figures from the latter stages of the events, you're looking at one week downtime to bring a serialized line into the scope. So why right now? Well, we all know that these are technically challenging regulations and bringing new solutions from packaging lines right up to your ERP systems. Pilot line can take up to a year to complete depending on the size of your organization, your complexities, uh, but be aware that your business processes will be affected in almost every step and need review and updated. So these regulations come into force soon or obviously some already are in force, so can your company not afford to be compliant? And with that I'll hand back to Carlos. Thank you very much. Nick, thank you uh, for that. At this point, we will jump into our Q&A session. Yes, indeed, we do. Indeed, we'll start our Q&A session right now. And this is open to all the panelists. And we do have a couple of questions coming in from the audience. And we have one audience question, and I believe this is for Terry. And the question we have for from the audience is, uh, this is a multidiscipline program to define and execute and requires for several different areas to successfully execute. Who was the business sponsor for this effort and how have you dealt with the moving timelines? So, <clears throat> excuse me, yes, so of course uh, for the bigger the company, typically the bigger the cost of the project. So as I said before, serialization is a project that touches many aspects of a company and so uh, in our case for example we have a our sponsor is on the central executive team who reports directly to our CEO within our company and this is no matter the size of the company this is the sort of level of visibility you're going to need um, serialization and how it's looking across the markets and the emerging markets in the world uh, is going to affect your business if you're in the pharmaceutical industry so uh, for my company, for example, we're talking about 75% of our product line is impacted by serialization at some point in the next five or six years. So this needs the right visibility at the highest levels of company uh, to, to make sure we have the sponsorship, the corporate sponsorship we need. We follow that up with 
monthly meetings with our uh, our central sponsor. Uh, we have six monthly checkpoints, even with the executive team above that, in terms of the finance and how we're calling down money uh, through the year, uh, and how markets are emerging. And the thing about uh, the moving timelines, it's all about communication. Um, as we've had a slight typo earlier in the slide, somebody's noticed that we said EU was 2018. <clears throat> well, in fact, originally it was, until they delayed it until 2019. However, the issue now, currently with the EU, is we don't have an exact specification yet of how we're going to transfer data to the European uh, supply chain hub uh, that covers Europe because the specifications are out of date. So there's always something about regulations moving and or details changing. So it's about constantly monitoring that. But that's the only thing you can do is just constantly monitor, have people paid to just monitor this stuff. Thank you for that. And the second question, um, I believe, is also uh, for Terry, and perhaps Carlos, you would like to add to it as well. The question is, is serialization more work for production workers and or quality unit? I, I'd be happy, Terry, to start that if you, if you, if you want, since you've uh, okay. had that long yep. um, I think uh, there's no doubt that there will be additional responsibilities for, for both production and quality. Uh, that said, um, the day-to-day -day activities for production uh, will increase more so than for quality. And if I were to look at some examples, um, and it would not be just limited to these, but if we look at um, the process around decommissioning cartons, cases, and et cetera, that's not something they'd be accustomed to. Uh, the re rework, do's and don'ts, again, something in the traditional packaging environment, it wouldn't be as significant as it, as it is today with the likes of data integrity and uh, serialized unit and child to parent relationship, et cetera. Um, when we look at case packers, one of the most complex pieces on the packaging line, when we have open door scenarios or damaged cases, uh, these just opening a door and pulling out product is a no-no in, in a serialization environment. Um, when we look at partial cases and the process around that and partial pallets, again, how, do you, how, does, a, how does an operator or someone in the production environment uh, deal with those scenarios and what are the procedures around that? Uh, and then you can look at stuff like print quality and the integrity of the data, uh, uh, operating different systems. So in a nutshell, I would say the, the production environment, the packaging environment, and the people associated with it uh, will definitely have a lot more layers of work. Uh, anything you want to add to that, Terry? Or? Yeah, and uh, for sure. But the 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 answer to that, the mitigation to that, is to have good quality, well trained out SOPs that tell them how they're going to uh, operate in this new landscape, uh, and and the training that you put in place uh, to bring the operators and your production staff uh, and used to the the new equipment potentially, but certainly the new ways of working. Um, yes, yeah, so then it, it I say just feeds back into this training. Training is key okay. going forwards. Great, thank you very much for those answers. And Carlos, we have a slide here on the save the date. Did you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, I think at this point what I'll, I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll begin uh, to close out and then I'll talk about what's going on uh, with a particular slide on your screen. So. As many may be aware, uh, we have Pharma Expo in Chicago just around the corner. Uh, Say Vision and Zenith will be uh, exhibitors for that event. It will be located in the West Building, booth number uh, W888. Uh, also on Monday, November 7th, my colleague, who you see his lovely face on the screen, uh, Marco, will be uh, joining me in speaking at the Innovation Stage booth, and again, booth 320 on the topic of Coping with serialization, regulatory, a full adaptable solution for pharmaceutical companies and OEMs worldwide. Uh, for everybody, registration is absolutely free. Pure, uh, simply enter in code 14N95 on the Pharma Expo, at Pharma Expo website. Um, you will also be receiving at the end of this a, a PDF of this presentation, so this save the date information will be uh, readily available for you, and we hope to see you there. 
Thank you very much, Carlos, for that. And we have reached the end of the question and answer portion of this webinar. And at this point, I would like to thank all our speakers, Carlos, Terry, Matayo, and Nick. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And if you have further questions, please direct them in the email addresses showing on your screen. And thank you, everyone, for participating in today's conference. You will be receiving a follow-up email from XTalks with an access to the recorded archive of this event and a PDF. A survey window will be popping up on your screen, and your participation is appreciated, as it will help us improve our future webinars. And again, please join us in thanking our speaker. We hope you found this conference informative. Have a great day, everyone.